death is the opposite of, of life. So if life is the buffing splinter that just buffs the, the team and keeps everyone healthy and armored up, death is basically just counter the enemy, nerf the enemy as much as you can, just non-stop reduce their magic damage, reduce their melee damage, reduce their archer damage. It's basically just a purge. So I'm sorry this video took so long to come out. It could have, like, I could have pumped it out really quickly and rushed it. But the reality is, out of my, like, five to 10,000 games, I actually I don't know how many games I've played, but I'm assuming it's at least over 5,000. But of my, like, 5,000 games played, I've probably only played 100 games of death in my life. Like, it's the, yeah, I avoid this splinter, like, there's no tomorrow. Um, yeah, I barely play it. So I didn't want to bullshit you guys, and I didn't want to be like, give you advice for something that I don't know. So what I did is I got somebody in to basically help me. Uh, I think you'll like him. I think he did a great job. So if you're listening to this, thank you again for the interview. And yeah, enjoy. I've done one of these before. No, uh, okay, fine. Let me, <laughs> let's introduce you. Okay, guys. So I was meant to do a Death Splinter guide where I basically teach you guys how to play the Death Splinter, but whenever I get Death Splinter as a fucking quest, I always click <laughs> New Quest and I never play it. So I brought in somebody to try and help us, like, learn it. Well, I'm Kira 1995, play Splinterlands a lot. I've been trying to do my best making it at the top of the silver board so far slaying bots and stuff that's <laughs> mostly it I, i've i used to run uh i used to help somebody run a chess club so i've done a lot of these types of games where strategy knowing like how the pieces move learning gradual and then i've played uh magic together in a lot so there's a whole lot of like team brewing and stuff like there so i guess okay so yeah. in, in, in silver <laughs> When do you pick the death splinter above a different splinter? Because I typically always avoid it like it's the plague. The death splinter, um... I think the best usage for death splinter is like whenever you've got like equalizer or... Let's say no melee or something like that where you could just like mimosa and then ramp up your own health, debuff their health and damage, stuff like that. Or even poison, because you have, like, shadowy presence, you've got corrupted pegasus, and yeah. then you've also got, yeah, you've got your, uh, spirit. Okay, you so just got, like, all these, like, cheap tanks that ramp up health, and you can, you can nerf their health at the same time. Okay. So, <laughs> if we were to look at the death summoners, how would you rank them in terms of importance death summoners let me go look at them real quick sure okay i'd say that's a hard one <laughs> i'd say mimosa and ouster are like almost on the same level and then cryptomancer after that then <sighs> Probably Jarlax. I use Jarlax more than Contessa, really. And then okay. Zentar. <laughs> well, no, I use Zentar more than uh, Contessa. So Contessa is actually probably my least used one. Okay, so you go Mimosa and the Rotwell. So, yeah. And then Cryptmaster. The reason I don't use Contessa as much is because Mimosa has the same ability. Like, Contessa is better for like four and lower. I always found it like, because obviously when I first started, I could only either play Contessa or Zentar. So I was like, okay, are they gonna? Is it, is it gonna yeah. be a person that plays fire, or is it gonna be a person with arches? <laughs> <laughs> Am I dealing with sneak boys and negative one? I found it like it was a complete guessing game, and then with Rotwell, it was a guessing game, yeah. but with magic as well. But I like that. Well, it, yeah, the reason Rotwell is uh because you can uh. The very fast flying front melee creature, like him having magic reflect and then nerfing, don't have to worry as much about nerfing magic. That's what I was trying to get to because magic will still hurt them, and then you can focus on nerfing everything else. Like yeah. you can double nerf melee and then just be fast, try to dodge range and reflect all magic. <laughs> my my go to combo whenever I have to play death is I play Cryptmancer and then I drop the 
one mana redemption card, and then I just hope that they have a few two level two, two HP monsters that just die. <laughs> Oh yeah, I play Silver League, so it's different for me. I don't think Silver has any the redemption cards. Okay. <laughs> There's like no redemption ability throughout anything. Uh, Fall Inspector's the two mana uh, speedy flyer that nerfs melee. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay, I do know him. I do know him. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I only play him in what's it called? I think like his. His nerfing ability is amazing, but I typically would play him only in Equalizer as well. Yeah, I, st I usually stick him behind the Fallen Spec. I mean, not Fall I stick him behind the Shadowy Presence. Okay. <laughs> so, what are your A or let's go S tier cards for death? Like, if somebody was wanting to build a death deck, which would be your like first recommendations? Haunted Spirit and. Shadowy Presence. <laughs> okay. Those are like the top two that I use the most in the front. Like, Magic Reflect's just too valuable. A lot of times I'll use them in front of my archers and stuff, and like that's the first thing that'll start taking the snipe hits. And then uh, your Haunted Spirit, I believe that starts at 8 HP, and you give it to um, 9, so it heals 3. Yeah. yeah. And Silver, he starts at 8. Go this... to the ones. Yeah, there's some like great... Oh. Tanks in death. Great tanks in death. Let's see. Lord. So haunted spirit would be would still be my number one one. Um, yeah. Let's see here. I look at things like Lord of Darkness or Dark Haon. I don't use Lord of Darkness hardly at all in silver. Okay. Yeah. What are his stats in silver? Uh, it would be uh, <laughs> oh, it's because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was saying. It's different throughout yeah. leagues, and then like it depends on the rule set. Like I, I could use a chain golem, or I could use uh, the uh, the other one, the phantasm. I think it was called that flying one. I was just speaking about it earlier. So those are probably my best tanks in death. There. Okay. Even even though chain golems are neutral, but I mean you chain golem, Pegasus, and then whatever else you want. Okay, so in terms of position two, you definitely would want the Reach guy, the Reach plus the is it strengthen or tank heal in silver? Uh, it's strengthen, blind yeah. strengthen Reach. I see. You. Yeah, that's a great card. Yeah, my favorite death card is probably Undead Archer for some weird reason. He, he's, yeah, two mana for two attack. That's, two mana, that's pretty two good. I, I use him a lot with Selenia. That's what I was talking about, like, just sticking. If you if you have, like, a 16 mana rule set, you can still pack a whole lot of damage with a Selenia death deck. Okay, so you get your really cheap tanks with Saturday Presence that gives the strength in and boost everyone up. And yeah. And then you just drop Undead Archer, Twisted Jester... <laughs> um, yeah, you've got the ferryman too. Oh, Even though he's slow, but he's got the decreased max health, so it messes with their uh, like if they have shield, you still do health damage, or if you uh, if it, he's got a healer, you might mess him to get him out of range for a three heal, make it a two instead. Nice. So that's where he comes in use. Yeah, ferryman look great actually, like three mana. And yeah. it'll be a two two five. Okay, so this is a game after my conversation with Kira, and yeah, hopefully it goes well. I still play my favorite Cryptmancer plus Redemption combo because obviously Redemption is not in silver, but it is in gold. Uh, followed up by, as we said, the Haunted Spirit because it's got heal and Magic Reflect, which is super super strong. Uh, in general. I even then included the Phantom Soldier because it's got Silence and Void for anti-magic, which is what I've managed to find. Unfortunately there is explosives and magic plus explosives is always a good combo. Uh, I don't, I didn't have the Magic Reflect Summoner, which is the Oswell. So hopefully this goes well, but there you go, the Redemption's coming in clutch already. 
Sandworm came in clutch. Uh, we've won this easily. The super strong Snipe Twisted Jester. And then we got the Octopider reducing melee damage. Cryptmancer reducing melee damage. And then, yeah, we actually won a death game. Okay, this is the second game playing death. Same thing. I like to put my Redemption plus Cryptmancer in the front in case they have like. Mm, the best example is a fire, a serpent spy. This combo straight away kills that. But then it's still the same thing. We still got our haunted spirit. We've still got our Pegasus. We still got our Phantom Soldier. I added the Tortoise in Chief just to give an extra bit of heal. And then we've got a big fat Octopied in the back. Uh, the main reason I went with the Tortoise in Chief is not actually the team heal, it's just that he's a magic with five damage. And everyone's got armor, so magic to me was just the way to go. And then yes, because it's armored up, I thought, and we got the negative one here, I definitely wanted to make sure that we got the silence as well as the reflect. But it's weird, he, he went magic, summoner, but then archers. I kind of fucked up here, because... This guy isn't fighting, but that was a weird mistake. But now, because of the blast, we'll be... Yeah, no, we're fine. One more. Cool, and we win. The airtime is yours. Oh, well, I think everybody knows the guild that I'm in. We've we've got a couple of people that just competed today in uh, the Zen Sports tournament that they just hosted. Here with uh, Digit Spin Furious Chickens, we got Bandoge and Brabo that just competed. So those are my guildies here. So please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. And if you're a new player, please use the promo code and I will happily send you the 0.5 US dollars back to you. It just lets me know that people are watching and using the promo and I'm helping new players join the community. Also, if you find me on the Discord, just pop me a message. I'll happily delegate any of the new players some power.